my little yarnivores and spiderettes, Fiber Spider back again with another tutorial just for you. And today I'm going to show you how to crochet this really easy, lovely, lacy, sort of like a fillet kind of uh, pattern uh, baby blanket, which you can make into a, you know, human, normal, adult-sized blanket or whatever. It is a square format. And it's sort of a variation of granny meets filet, really, really easy. And what I did was I used uh, Lion Brand's ice cream yarn. I believe this is strawberry. Absolutely love it. I used only one skein and it created a blanket with a really cute edging to it that I did using front and back post double crochets. And I only used one skein for this blanket. It's about three foot square and it's really, really quite simple. I was inspired by a pattern that I found online called uh, Bobby's Square and I'm going to put a link to that in the description down below. And what I did was I tweaked it a bit and I just kept going out further and further so that it could be a full-sized blanket. And uh, well, without further ado, let's get started. Alrighty, so uh, for this piece, for this example, I'm using, again, the Ice Cream Yarn by Lion Brand. This is the colorway of Moon Mist, and this, along with the other, no, I'm not sponsored, but I do like to let you know what it is that I'm using, so if you ever want to duplicate the results, you can do so. And I am using a size G crochet hook, and this is a rather thin weight of yarn. I believe it is a weight of uh, three, although it is pretty thin. So I'm using a size G. You can use whatever hook size works for whatever yarn you're using. You know, go crazy, have fun. So we're gonna start, of course, with our slip knot, and we're going to chain eight stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then we're going to do a slip stitch into the first chain to create a ring. Alrighty. And so for round number one, we're going to start by chaining up three And then this is very much like the granny in some respects. So we're going to do another two more double crochets. That first chaining of three counts as a double. And these two doubles count towards creating sort of a cluster of three. Now, the difference, one of the main differences is that instead of doing typically a chain one or a chain two in the corners like you do in a granny square, this one actually you chain four. And that will become more apparent as we go on. So after chaining four, we're then going to continue just as we have been by doing three double crochets into that center ring. Okay. Oops. And also, I'm working over my tail as I'm crocheting. It makes it a little bit easier later when you're finishing. And so after doing my three doubles, chain four again. And then three more doubles into the ring. like so. So we've got three clusters. We need one more cluster. So again, chain four and three more doubles into that center ring. All right. Now, to do 
the finishing, okay, what we're going to do is chain two, and we're going to do a half double into the third chain. That's that top chain. So right into the top of the chain three that we did, like so. And so we're going to do a half double. Like so. Ta-da! Alrighty. Alrighty, so onwards to round two. We're going to start by chaining up three. And in this space here, the reason why we do a half double is because we need to increase on this side before we go into our doubles. So into this space, we're going to do a double crochet. The chain three counts again as our initial double crochet. Then we have another one. So we've got two. Then we're going to do a double into each of these doubles. One, two, three, and then two doubles into this chain four space. All right, now we have to create the corner, so that's chaining of four. And two more doubles into the chain space. And then double crocheting in each of the three doubles. So because we have two doubles on either side, along with the three, we went from three to seven double crochets for this round. So I've got the two on the end, one in each, and then two into this space. All right. And then chain four again. Two more doubles into the chain four space. A double crochet into each of the three. Also, if you're going to use perhaps, say, a, a worsted weight yarn, um, I would be disinclined to use a size I, which is the usual recommended size hook, because this project tends to be a little bit lacy with all of the diamonds. So with that being said, I personally, if I were to do this in a typical worsted weight yarn, a weight of four, I would suggest perhaps using a size H hook, a little bit smaller so that it's not quite so billowy. All right, so we have our two on each side, the three in the middle, and we're almost to the end. So again, chain four. And then two more doubles into the chain four space. And then one in each of the three doubles. Okay, and we're almost there. All right, and then two more doubles into this space here. All 
All right, now we're going to finish this round a little bit differently. Um, so we're going to... Are we doing it differently or the same? No, we're going to do it a little bit differently. Uh, chain two. Okay. And then we're going to do a double. Okay. And we're going to... This is going to be our finishing for the rest. All right. So into that third chain of the initial chain three, we're going to do a double. I think I'm doing this right. <laughs> all right. You could use a half double still, but I'm just going to do a double for now. You know, it, it's all really what works for you. Okay. I'm not trying to be confusing, but for me, it's easier to remember. All right. Because this is really all double crochets for the most part. Okay. So that is the end of round two. Round number three. So we're going to continue on in the same fashion that we have been for a couple more rounds, but I'm going to do this with you guys. So we're going to start by chaining up three. And that counts as our first double, then another double into that space. So we've got two doubles. And then we're going to do double crochets into each of the now seven double crochets. So we went from three to seven, and then we're going to end up with including the two before and after, we're going to end up with a total of 11 double crochets on each side. And it's going to keep growing in this fashion as we go along. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then eventually our diamonds are going to get to the right size, and then we're going to start decreasing and starting new diamonds, and I'm going to show you how to do that. And then once you get the hang of it, you won't even need me. Well, I'd still like for you to be here. You're good company. <laughs> All right, so as you can see, we have two, four, six, eight, ten, and eleven. All right, and now we're going to turn the corner just as we have been. So that's one, two, three, four, and then two more into this chain space. So that's two in the chain space, and then one in each of the seven double crochets down in here, right in here. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, plus the two on the end makes nine. So two more in this chain space, and that'll make eleven. It's really as easy as that as we keep going. One, two, three, four chains at the end, and then two more doubles into this chain space. Okay, and then one in each for these doubles. It's a lot of repetition, you know, and this is, like I said, this is one of those really great patterns for um, once you get the hang of it and you look at your project in progress, your, your whip, your work in progress, once you look at it, you can really identify where you're at and you won't have to refer to the pattern and you can just keep going. And to me, those are some of the best patterns. 
All right, so I reached the end. So now I have to do two more into this chain space here. <clears throat> okay. So we have a total of 11 stitches here. And now we chain four again. And then into the chain space, two more doubles. For the most part, this is how the pattern goes. And the only thing that you really are going to have to concern yourself with is when to start and stop the increasing and decreasing of your diamonds. But we will get there. So after doing those two, it's just one in each for these. And then we will reach the end of round three. I don't know about you, but I'm starting to think this sort of looks like a, a flower of sorts. It's quite pretty. All right. And so then in the chain space, two more doubles. Okay, chain two, and I'm going to do my double again into the third chain right in here. There you go. And that is the end of the third round. Ta -da. Round number four. All right, so we have 11 here on each side. Two, four, six, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay. So we're going to keep going because we want our diamonds to be a little bit bigger. So we're going to start by chaining up three. And then into this space here, we're going to do yet another double. And then we're going to do a double in each of the double crochets here. All right, so. With these two in the space there, that makes three total. And then, <clears throat> oh, pardon me, four, and then five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Eleven, twelve, oops, thirteen, and since we reached the end, we have to add two more double crochets into the chain space at the end. So now we have fifteen on each side. So we went from 3 to 7 to 11 to 15, and we're going to keep going in this fashion. So we're going to chain 4 again, and then into the chain space, another 2 more double crochets, and then 1 in each of these doubles. We're going to need 15 on this side as well. Absolutely love this yarn. And it's not one of those where the, the variegated is so abrupt 
and choppy, and I wouldn't quite recommend one of those for this particular pattern because I think it would take away from the diamond design. All right, so we have our two here. We worked across and we're at the end, so we have to do two more doubles right in here. Chain four. Okay, and then two more doubles into that chain space. And then a double in each double for this side. Yeah, so like I was saying, I don't think that a, a short colorway variegated will work very well. Um, only because, yes, I, I think that it would take away from the overall um, effect with the diamonds. Uh, this is a fairly long variegated colorway, which I rather like. Um, and if you were, if you were perhaps to use, say, um, Karen cakes or something like that, I think that would look nice, uh, because of the color coordinating nature of the colorways. However, um, there would be a very distinct line where one starts and another one stops. So you might find that distracting, especially if it happens in the middle of the pattern. You may or may not like it, you know, that's totally personal preference, of course. So we reach the end here. So now in the chain space, we need to do two more double crochets. Okay, chain four. And then two more double crochets in the chain space. All right. And then a double crochet in each of these doubles. And then we'll be done with round four. Another thing that you could consider, although this might get messy, would be to use more than one strand of yarn, more than one color. So perhaps for each quadrant, you know, this would be one of the, the quadrants. If you were to divide this square into four quadrants, um, you know, this here, here, and here, doing a, um, a different color of yarn for each quadrant. That might be rather interesting visually. However, you would have a lot of working balls of yarn, um, a lot of tails perhaps, or if you were to try to keep each color in each quadrant, you would have to turn your work after each round. Otherwise, this color would go into this color and, and so on and so forth. Um, unless if you're doing more of a uh, intarsia kind of method. But, you know, it's, it's again, it's just a matter of trying to come up with new things. And that's ultimately what this pattern is. You know, I came across something, it inspired me to tweak it a little, and now we have this. So again, I've reached the end of my round, so I need to do two more doubles in this chain space here. Chain two, and then double crochet into the top third chain of my beginning chain. There you go. And that's the end of round four. Oh, it's so pretty. Oh, I love it. <laughs> Alrighty. Round number five. This is going to be the last round uh, in which we're just doing this in a very straightforward manner. So we're going to again chain up 
three, and then do another double crochet into this space right here, like so, just as we have been doing, and then a double crochet into each double crochet all the way across, just as we have been. And so to retrace our steps, we went from three double crochets on each side. We went from three to seven to 11 to 15. And we are now going to have 19 because we're still adding two on each side of the 15. So it's going to be a total of 19 on each side. Now, of course, you can do as I have done, and you can tweak my pattern that I've managed by tweaking another pattern, and you can tweak yours so that your diamonds are bigger or smaller or, you know, really what have you. This is, in essence, like I said, it's a sort of a cross between a granny square and a fillet pattern. And those patterns are awesome because you can really, really customize and make them your own. Take some patience and a little bit of mathematics, but it works. So that is all of our stitches for this side. You know, especially if you want things to be um, symmetrical and uniform, you really do need to use a little bit of math, but it's nothing catastrophic. This is not calculus. So we reach the end with our two double crochets in the chain. So now we chain four again. And then two double crochets into that chain space. And we continue on by doing, after our two double crochets in the chain space, we're going to do one double in each double, just as we have been. And I know I keep gushing over this yarn, but I absolutely love the color changes. And this is the first time in which that this particular colorway came out, uh, Moon Mist, and I just, I went crazy. And I hate to say it, but yeah, I bought every skein of this that I could get my little mitts on when it came out. And this yarn only comes out, in my area anyway, it only comes out once every year for whatever reason, I don't know, but it only comes out in the spring. And this isn't quite spring, but close enough, I suppose. Late winter, how about that? All right, so worked my way across, I reached the corner. So of course, as you probably know by now, got to do two more doubles into the chain space. Okay, chain four again. You know, I just, I love the softness, I love the colorways, and the yardage that you get with this yarn I really, really like, because you can do a nice finished product with just one skein. All right, so working right along, or as the Muppets would say, moving right along, foot loose and fancy free. I don't know the rest of the lyrics, so <laughs> oh well. Um, it's been
been a while. All right, so we're going to keep going. And is this the fourth side? No, we still got one more. No problem. Um, so you just keep on going in this way. You know, another variation to this that you can do is when you're doing your diamonds, you could have uh, spaces in the center of your diamonds, sort of diamonds within diamonds. You know, there's a lot of variations that you can do with fillet work, and this is, you know, in essence, fillet work, but it's done in the round instead of in rows, like you quite often see with a uh, sort of a, a mesh stitch that you end up filling in. All right, so we reached the end of this row, this section. So now two more doubles into the chain stitch area, the chain space. Okay, and then chain four again. Two more doubles into the chain space. All right, and then this will be the last side for this round. Okay. And because I want very much to be thorough, <clears throat> um, I do think that I'm going to make this video into a couple of parts, which will also be easier for the sake of uploading purposes, um, and that way you can follow along. I don't think this is going to be quite so much of a crochet along of sorts, but I do wish to be thorough and I don't want to jip you guys. So, alrighty, and so I reached the end of this side. So again, needing to do two double crochets into this chain space area. All right and then chain two, and then a double crochet into the third chain at the top of our beginning chain three. And we have ourselves a double crochet. All right. Now I know that this, this in and of itself is nothing spectacular or, you know, tremendously new. However, this is the foundation for our, our blanket. And uh, this is actually the last round uh, for the part, this part of, you know, my little blanket series, if you will. Um, and so in the next part, I'm going to show you how we're going to create new diamonds and decrease and increase. And it's going to be a, a full repeat, okay, for the next video. So this is going to, you know, provide you with the basis for the blanket. And now, granted, you could make a whole bunch of these squares and stitch them together and so forth, but you won't have to if you keep going in the way that I'm going to prescribe for you in the next video. So listen, my dears, I really hope that you like this so far. If you do, please hit the little thumbs up button down below. And uh, if you have any questions, comments, what have you, please do so in the comment section down below. I love hearing from you. And if you haven't hit the subscribe button already, please do so as well, because I try to post videos as often as I can, and that way you'll be in the know. So listen, until next time, I want you all to stay inspired, stay caffeinated, and above all, stay stitching. I love you guys, and I will see you in the next part of this video, and in general. <laughs> Bye for now.